Charles, uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, when he missed weight yesterday, how much did your confidence get boosted just knowing that you know, he obviously had some issues heading into this fight? Um, it just gave me a reason to to want to kick his ass more. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I always go in there, I try to envision a reason that he's going to get mad enough to really want to get, hurt someone, and, you know, that that definitely gave me a good enough reason. What, right? did, what did you say to him at the weigh-in? It seemed like you guys had an exchange uh, yesterday at the ceremonials. I told him he's going to pay twice for it. He's going to pay in the cage, and he's going to pay me in front of his purse. So I did. He paid for it. I popped his arm, so, you know, he did that, and then I get, you know, 20 40% of his purse. So... Um, you know, it's part of the game. It's just the thing that really bothers me about that is a lack of discipline. That's something I pride myself on. And every fighter in, in the entire, you know, that was on this card, the 24 fighters on this card, is that's the biggest thing is discipline. And nobody appreciates when, when someone doesn't make weight because it just shows that. And it, it's just disrespect. Did that make it kind of per It seemed like he ended up getting personal, but I wasn't if it, I'm sure if it was because, like, some of the stuff he said beforehand, like, hey, Boston Strong, you're down in Florida, you know, if it was that or if it was when he missed weight, that's when it got personal. No, nah, it, it's always personal when I'm fighting. I mean, I'm going in there to take the guy's head off, and I make that very clear every time I fight. But the fact, yeah, the fact that, you know, he missed weight, is just, it's, just, it's just disrespectful, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't fall for that, and I made him pay for it tonight. Did you know you'd be able to submit him? I mean, that, that's uh, pretty impressive. That's kind of his game, right? No, that's my game. I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on the Charles McCarthy, Ricardo Laborio at American Top Team. I'm the best Jiu-Jitsu guy in the division, the best Jiu-Jitsu guy, featherweight in the world. So anybody that wants to try me, let's go. Um, you know, I just proved it. I just took out Manny Bermudez, I think had 14 sort of submission wins or something like that, and I just armbarred him in the first round. So it speaks for itself. What was the emotion like, man? It's been a long <laughs> long ride to get back here, right? Can you talk about what that feeling was like? Yeah, there's no doubt, man. I was out for two years, but it wasn't two years wasted. And uh, I worked really hard these two years. Went to Thailand, Holland, worked in my game, didn't stop. Back with my coach, Charles Chainsaw McCarthy, former UFC veteran. And he'll call, I mean, they call him Chainsaw for a reason. You know, he takes people's arms and limbs off, and I learned from the best. For submission victory since January of 2015, is there a weight off your shoulders just getting that finish and not going the distance like some of those fights? Yeah, especially. I'm back to my ways, man. I mean, I had eight first-round finishes coming into this fight. I was I started my first my, my fight career uh, with nine first-round finishes, and, you know, that's how I started. I was 9-0, and then they put me against top 10 Dennis Seaver on five days' notice. I had to cut 35 pounds, and I flew to Sweden and Europe to fight their best guy. And... Uh, you know, it was a little bit early in my career, but this is four years later, and this is the strongest, best version of Boston Strong, and I'm back. Still undefeated in Boston to do yep. it in the Garden. How does that feel? It's amazing. 3-0 and in the Boston Garden, 8-0 and and in New England, 5-0 uh, and under the CES banner. This is the best best feeling in the world. This is what I worked so hard for. This is the moment I envisioned when the doc told me that, you know, it was improbable that I would come back and make a return. So, I mean, I'm title chasing. I'm coming for the belt. I want a top guy, and I want to be the champion of this division. And I want to one day hang a banner, Charles Rosa, Boston Strong banner from the rafters of the TD Garden. Well, you mentioned those three wins. I don't know if you're aware, but you now have the most wins in Boston in oh, UFC history. That's it. Conor McGregor, Rob Font, Travis Brown, and I think Chris Wade. I that's awesome. That what is that, right? that That's a stat I like to hear. Boston Strong, baby. You I'm said, back. You said you had the best jujitsu in, in the division, but I think a lot of people are going to bring up from Gracie in, in that. I don't know if you saw his last performance. What did you mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was very impressive. And uh, this, unfortunately for him, this isn't jujitsu. This is mixed martial arts. And uh, I've dedicated the last 10 years of my life to training mixed martial arts. I'm a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yes. But I've also traveled the entire world training with the best coaches. You know, Roger Carl, I have him at American Top Team. You know, amazing stand-up skills. I've been in Thailand training with the Thais. I've lived there, trained, lived in uh, Holland, trained in Dutch kickboxing. So this isn't a, you know, I'm not a one-trick pony. I can do it all. And, uh, man, I'm just happy that I'm back and happy I'm back in my city. And uh, the best city in the world, city of champions, Boston. Charles, you talked about the doctor who said that you shouldn't fight again. If he was here right now, what would you say to him? I'd like to, well, you know what I told him? The last thing I, I said to him, because we kind of had an argument when I left and I ended up going to a different doctor, um, I told him I'm going to come back and I'm going to put the belt on your desk one day. And we had it out. Or I had an argument with the doctor because just some misunderstandings and some things that he was saying to me that I didn't, I didn't like. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I said to him. That was the last words I said to him, and I plan on doing that. I know you said you were very upset about... Danny missing weight. Yeah. But he's a New England guy, you're a New England guy. He lost two in a row. If you can give us some advice, what would you say? I would say 
start getting some discipline, you know? That's what mixed martial arts is all about, discipline. So I don't respect people that aren't disciplined in the sport. You know, maybe he hasn't learned it, maybe he wasn't raised like that as a kid, and I was, so it's easy for me to say that that's how I was raised. I was raised to never give up. I was raised with discipline, and I was, you know, that's something that I follow, but I think for him that he needs to get back to being disciplined, I think he'll have a much better career and a much better life overall. Uh, how do you feel right now, Charles? I mean, obviously, <laughs> come, obviously you feel great about the win, but physically, coming off the layoff, getting a win like that, how, how do you feel physically like right now? I feel amazing. It's just, the, it's all the hard work pays off. It was just, I'll never forget when I went to the doctor's office that day and he told me, you know, he, he told me that, it, yeah, I should hang up, uh, that I should hang up the gloves. The doctor said I should hang up the gloves. And I said, is it impossible? It, can I not never fight again? He said, it's improbable, it's not impossible. And the second that he said that, I knew that I was gonna fight again. And I was dreamed about this moment for the last two years, every single day, real dreams all the time. And it, that's what pushed me and that's what motivated me to have this moment and it's here and I couldn't be happier. Is this the most, you know, <clears throat> win that feels the best at this point. I mean, you're getting, you look like you're getting a little bit emotional right now. Does it yeah. feel better than any other one you've had in your career? Yeah, hundred percent. This is the best one in my career. Um, especially taking out a guy like Manny, who's an amazing submission specialist. Uh, he was on a 14 fight win streak at one point in his career, taking out the top guys in New England. And I just showed who the baddest motherfucker in Boston is, Charles Boston Strong Rosa. Clearly it didn't affect you, but is ring rust a real thing? Did it take at least a few <laughs> seconds? you to feel your timing was there. Tell us how it felt. I mean, no, I mean, you tell me. I finished the guy in the first round. I don't think I could have done any possibly any better, but um, I also had a layoff before I fought my last one. But no, I mean, that's just stuff's all mental. Same when I fought Yeo Rodriguez. I fought him in Mexico City. They were talking about the elevation, how it's going to affect me, and how I need to get there and train, do my training camp there. But all this stuff is mental, you know, and I'm mentally strong. I'm boss is strong, and that's, that's the way it is. This is, uh, the, you know, the ring rust is for people that are mentally weak. On the flip side, would you recommend maybe to fighters that instead of trying to fight so often, I know everyone needs a paycheck, but maybe giving your body a chance to rest and recover might be a good thing? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was definitely a good thing. I could just feel it in my joints and my body. Um, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily fighting so much that's bad. It's not taking care of your body properly. One of the things that I implemented into my training that I think is what made me a better, stronger fighter overall was strength conditioning and physical therapy. I dedicated the last two years, literally for the first year of my rehab, I went to physical therapy twice a day, almost every single day, obviously besides the weekends, because they were closed. And I'd never seen the physical therapist and the doctors thought I was kind of crazy. They didn't say it to me, they opened me with welcome arms, open arms, but I could see by the look in their eyes, like, oh, you're back again? Like, you were just here this morning. They, you know, and I'm just happy that I'm back. And, you know, they know it's real. I do want to give them a shout out, you know, at the Florida Backs Institute. They, they really worked. Uh, David Adelman, Dr. Nate Lowen, Dr. Gale, these are the doctors that really, you know, opened their arms to me and were able to get me in there and able to allow me to go there every day because obviously that stuff's expensive. So they sponsored me pro bono and I was able to go there and get back to 100%. What's next? Next, I'm, I'm title chasing. I'm coming for the belt. That's why. That's what I'm in this for. I'm not in this just for a paycheck. I'm not in this just for fun. This am UFC fighter to just train. This is what I love to do. And the reason I got into this was a champion. I've been a champion at every, and you know that that was my goal. I was an amateur. I was a champion. I won six, you know, six world titles. And I'm, you know, I'm coming for the UFC, the one that matters the most. Are you looking early next year? I think. Just to I'm looking. I, man, I would love to get on the December seventh card with my big bro, Walter Big Ticket yeah. Harris, dude. Like he's fighting in the nation's capital in Washington D.C. Main event against Overeem, and you know I want to come for the number one spot. And anybody that's willing to fight me, that's going to put me in there, let's go. I'm ready. I want to be in the car with my big bro, Walter Big Ticket. Are you going to keep yourself ready in case they don't put you on it? But you know, all the time someone gets hurt, someone pulls out. Would you? Be I'm ready? Yeah, I'm always ready. I live by stay ready, so you don't have to get ready. That's the way it goes. You mentioned you're in this for the title shot. You just beat a guy that was ranked not too long ago. How long of a timeline do you think you're in that situation? I mean, I think I'm right there. I mean, all my only losses in all were in the UFC, and there were the top top ten guys, uh, Yair Rodriguez. I beat Yair Rodriguez. You go back and watch that fight. I lost a split decision to him in his hometown in Mexico, and. I don't, I mean, I don't agree with it. Of course, you know, everyone thinks, oh, you won and lost, but go back and watch that fight. It speaks for itself. Um, all my, and then obviously the first one at short notice against Dennis Seaver wasn't, you know, I, and like I said, I don't make excuses, but I think now the times my, my luck's about to change. That was four years ago. I was a different fighter. I'm the best fighter I've ever been. I've been working so hard. I got my coach, Roger Carl, like really mixing up 
you know, my stand-up skills. I didn't have the stand-up skills. I had my jiu-jitsu skills when I came to the UFC from Charles McCarthy. You know, I had vicious submissions and awesome stuff like that. But he lined me up with the right people to get my stand-up skills the same. I've been, to, like I said, I've been to Thailand. I've been to Holland. Now I got my, you know, mixed martial arts striking coach Roger Corral from American Top Team, and I trained at the best gym in the world with the best guys, and I know what my skills are. So I'm so excited right now just because I know where I'm at and I know where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the champion of the featherweight division. Anyone uh, specifically you got in mind, or just anyone top 15 you want? There's anybody. I mean, you put me with anybody. Anybody that's in my way for the title run, I'm going right through them. Just like I flew through Bermuda, to, uh, Bermuda today, flew right through Bermuda, and I'm coming for the next guy, top 10.